became a doctor. So there are many reasons for many people to become a doctor. So there are the top nine reasons to be a doctor. Number one, I hate to sleep. Number two, I failed in maths. Number three, I like to study in school forever. Number four, nobody can read my handwriting. And number five, my dad got extra money. Of course, that's not true. I enjoyed my life enough, and I can't live without tension. And I want to pay for all my sins. And the last one, I don't want to get married before the age of 40. These are the reasons precisely why I became a doctor. But you see, when I was young, when I decided to go to medical school, at the entrance exam, we were asked to arrange the letters, P-N-E-I-S, and form the name of an important body organ, which is the most useful when erect. I'll give you one second. Those who answered spine, like me, became doctors, and the rest of the people went on to Facebook. <laughs> As I say, in the, in the today's theme is why not? In fact, I would say for all the fields in the life of a, a particular individuals, the medical science is the field where we should challenge ourselves every minute, why not, rather than why. Because that is a field so much dynamic, so many intricacies are there. It's a kaleidoscope of human emotions, and we have got the privilege of being the ringside seating to see the emotions of the human beings. And so many times we should challenge ourselves, why not, than why. Then only we can make a progress. And a lot of the times, many people join the medical profession with an intention to make money. If that is the sole aim, that can be one of the aims, but if it is the sole aim by which you join a medical school, that's not right for you or for the society. I want this young man to see your pulse than your purse. But many students, just by passing intermediate, get into medical school without realizing what is the gravity of the medical thing and what it takes to make a good doctor. You need to make a lot of sacrifices. That's why I question the people or the society, why not we create a one-year curriculum to join before the medical school to go through that, whereby a person is taught the intricacies of being humane, the intricacies of being compassionate, the nuances of helping somebody who is in distress. These are all the things and abstract qualities which need a bit of formal education, which is not taught in our regular colleges. We are taught in the physics, chemistry, biology, but not to tell how to be compassionate. That itself is an art and science by itself. So why not we create a curriculum? And after the one year, if this guy has got an attitude, an aptitude to become a doctor, then only he is allowed into the medical school. And you all know that your attitude decides your altitude. Accidents kill more people in India than HIV, cancers, and heart attacks put together. And unfortunately, the governments do not give that much importance to the road traffic accidents. And it's a shame that India stands in the top three countries in the world in road traffic deaths. And Andhra Pradesh now, of course, Andhra and Telangana have got the dubious uh, distinction of being in the top two, three in the road traffic deaths. And I, being an orthopedic surgeon, my heart is close to this. These are actual pictures happened in Andhra. And this is the picture which has got an award of a photographic journalism award, which is very poignant. This gentleman lost his hand. Hand is there, waiting for a casualty for some people to come and save his limb and life. So why not we create a system whereby the people are taught about the prevention of deaths on the road or prevention of accidents? You will be surprised to know that 60% of the road traffic deaths are preventable. They are by the driver error, whether it is a speed or a drunken driving or not following the traffic rules. And let me tell you, Hyderabad people have got a color blindness. They don't know what is red. No traffic red light can stop them. So you being the youngsters should be the role models. Wear the helmet, drive properly.
even if your girlfriend is next, sitting next to you, put both hands on the steering. There are times where you can put hands on her, but here is the steering wheel. So please be aware of that. <laughs> so why not we create ATLS, ACLS, there are many systems out there, and we got to educate the people to prevent the accidents. Coming to the government hospitals, compromise everywhere. Unfortunate situation, a girl trying to carry her mother on a stretcher, four people sleeping on the bed, people in the outdoors of the hospital, a woman and man sharing the bed. They are not wife and husband. But that is the sad state of affairs in the hospitals. No IV stands. He has to hold his own stand. So this is the reality of the government hospitals. And our people, all the chief ministers, they put a lot of effort, a lot of uh, print, and a lot of money on this. But end of the day, the results are not there. What are the reasons? There are many. So why not challenge ourselves? I got a bit controversial suggestion for this. But why not these government hospitals are leased to the private and corporate hospitals? There are many private hospitals which got a perfect governance models. So we can run the hospitals and do the revenue sharing. Everybody is a winner. Government burden is less. Patients are well taken care. And corporate hospitals get some money and government gets the money. So why not we think of that lines? Another thought to ponder. Coming to the RMP doctors. RMP doctors means registered medical practitioners. They are, don't go to medical school like you and me. They just pick up a couple of things or act like a compounders and pick up the nuances of uh, seeing the pulse or acting as though seeing the pulse and give you antibiotics. And all world city is full of them. But people think that they are nuisance to the medical system. But I got some other thoughts in my mind. They are not liability if you treat them properly, they are assets. How many people like you and me, nicely collared, well-suited, well-groomed in Hyderabad to go to the remote parts of India and serve the people there? Nobody. 80% of the doctors practice in the urban area where 20% of the patients are there. Where 80% patients are in the rural area, only 20% of the people are there. So it's not possible. But these RMP doctors are the lifesavers. They might give you once in a while an antibiotic which is not needed, but they are the guys who go there first and give you an antibiotic or a steroid and bring you to the um, city. So why not we create a system where we can educate them in the first aid and in fundamentals of uh, critical care and get them onto the city. So that is a thought again which is going in my mind when I said why not. And coming to the Treatment of the patient, I always say that cure with passion, care with compassion. Without compassion, there is nothing in this world. Compassion is such a globe, such a beautiful word, and I don't mind reciting it every minute. Without compassion, you cannot be a human being. It, not only the doctor, every person in this audience should be compassionate. And I used to have a principal in medical school, he used to tell whether you are a doctor of allopathy, naturopathy, or homeopathy, first of all, you should have sympathy. So that's a great appreciation of the human qualities. So compassion is the hallmark of any human being. A kind gesture can reach a wound that only compassion can heal. And you all know that simple gestures make all the difference in the lives of the people. You don't need to be an extraordinary man living, having billions of money to help somebody else. That helping nature is a part of the heart. So nothing is so healing as the human touch. That's what everybody says that. So that touch and is sometimes missing, especially in the medical schools nowadays. And people have to learn about that. So again, another thought process. Why not the human skills and the interpersonal relationships and being compassionate? Very important. Let me come to another topic. The, I, I love this topic. Humor in medicine. Humor is medicine. A lot of people think that being a doctor is stiff upper lip. No. You can be humane and you can be humorous and still touch the lives of the people. Of course, you cannot trivialize the problems of the patient, but at the same time, humor can break the walls and the patient feels comfortable with you. So now let us go to the genome. Now you all know that genome is the complete history of you 
from the theoretic point of view. We know what is your DNA, what is your RNA, where is your 23 LL is there, 24 ALL, what is around there, we know everything. So when you know everything about your basic molecular level, gone those days where the family or the marriage people are going to exchange the horoscope. Why not we exchange the germoscope? So that's it. So tomorrow when my grand-granddaughter wants to marry somebody, I'll ask the guy's germoscope, and I'll buy you 23X gene, there is some liver problems, I don't want you. So like that you can have a future marriage, with the genomoscope. That is not far-fetched, I'm telling you, okay? And this is how babies will be born in the future. You don't need to... <laughs> of course, sex is very important, but you can have sex for enjoyment, not to produce babies. So if you want, you can simply, neatly sit in the couch and print what you want, and your wife also prints what she wants. The ovary and sperm will go and meet in a virtual world and print off baby will come out of a printer. So that's possible. So coming to the theme of this morning, why not is a very important thing. If you keep on probing yourself, why not me? Why not you? So a lot of the times when you're in depression, when you, all the whole world conspires on you, you think, why me? But when the world is giving you the goody things, you will never ask, why me? This is a famous quote from Ardh Raj. When he was dying with cancer, people asked him, why you? Then he said, boss, out of the millions of black people, I was the only one who got the Wimbledon title. Then I did not ask God, why me? When I got the cancer, how should I ask the God? So what I'm trying to tell is, when the good things come, bad things also will happen. Don't just question the God, why me? So like that, why not me? Why not you? Why not us? Why not now? Why not again? Why not try? So that's the essence of life. When you have this theme in your psyche, things will happen. Let me tell you, I tell, why not sky? Sky is the limit. And when you keep trying, nothing is impossible. And I, I'm not telling you my biography. If I tell myself, you will understand. I failed four times in my medical entrance examination. Fourth time I got my medical seat. Okay. And after joining medical school, the priorities changed. Of course, Kaunin knows me. He, I was his junior in agricultural college. And after the joining the medical school, I looked more at the girls than my biochemistry book. And I failed in biochemistry. So I am not a typical successful candidate, but I am reasonably successful today. I passed my FRCs at the age of 40 in England. What I'm trying to tell is sky is the limit, and there is no age limit, and there is no capability limit. You just got to dream and try to get it. There will be a lot of irritants on the way. Even Barack Obama has got a fly to deal with. And sometimes when you are at lofty, things will happen. You will be pissed at. Okay. We make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. This is one of the famous quotations again. I want you to develop that kind, helping nature. Being able to help somebody and not helping is the worst sin in the world. A beggar on the street, even if he wants to help, he can't help. But whereas you and me are designed by the God to help the people. So pick up that helping nature. Have that kind heart. Help the people. It need not be extravagant. Even a small gesture can make the difference. Now that brings me to the dreams. Famous quotation again by the late president, Abdul Kalam. Dreams are not what you see in sleep. They are the things that do not let you sleep. I want each one of you to pick up a dream. Let it be your career. Let it be... Uh, social responsibility, let it be picking up a girl like Aishwarya Rai, and Aishwarya Rai comes again and again because I love her. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell is pick up a dream and let it consume you. Let it burn you. Don't have anything except living the dream. That makes the lives. That makes you into a per total personality. Without a dream, the life is as good as gone. Let me tell you, my friend, everyone has to nurture a dream. How big it is, how deep it is, how different it is, immaterial. But every one of you should have a dream. Spend time with parents. Thank you.